In this video, we are finding out how far the Polestar 3 long-range dual motor performance can go on a full charge of battery at 120 kph or 75 miles an hour in the cold and in the snow. Not ideal conditions, but a test I think many people will appreciate. New in my tests is also instrumented testing of road noise with proper equipment. So no more subjective measurements, but definitive answers for you guys. So without further ado, let's join me on the road after about 20 minutes. We're back in the Polestar 3, this time a long range dual motor performance with 22 inch wheels. Yeah, not the best configuration for getting good range, especially now in winter. And also today's conditions is pretty cold, minus eight degrees Celsius outside now. It's windy. We have a headwind of about three to four meters per second moving northward and also snowy outside. So yeah, this is kind of a worst case scenario for most people watching. Of course, there are gonna be people watching who are like, oh, minus eight is like summer where I live and that amount of snow is nothing, sure. But I think people commenting that and with that opinion, you're in the minority. For most people, this is extreme. Even here in Eastern Norway, you don't have a lot of this type of weather in Oslo. You have to move outside of Oslo and northward like towards uh, Hamad, towards Muel, where we're driving now. But yeah, the consumption is pretty high, 34 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So yeah, that is a lot higher than when we tested a non-performance version of this a few months back when it was like around zero to five degrees Celsius. So that cold weather is really going to impact the consumption. And also another thing we're doing in this video, which we're gonna do in the upcoming videos and moving forward, is doing instrumented testing of road noise. We're gonna measure that with instrument. I have my laptop here. I have a proper microphone. We can get a graph. It's not like one of those, you know, the cheap decibel meters where you just, you know, measure it and read off a screen. That is not reliable. I tried doing that before and other YouTube channels who do that, that's not a reliable way to measure. I do it with my computer, proper software, with a proper microphone, and then we get a graph. So what we're gonna do is that I'm gonna give you the results of the noise, which is gonna be done at 80 kilometers an hour, 100 kilometers an hour, and 120 kilometers an hour at the end of the video when we do go through the results of the consumption and also the range so that's going to be pretty cool moving forward and comparing the different cars but i can say right away that this is one of the most silent and comfortable cars you can travel with on the motorway i mean we're doing 120 kilometers an hour i don't have to raise my voice there's very little tire noise and just a little bit of you know wind noise off the wing mirrors it is really comfortable to travel with this car at high speeds Okay guys, we are now at our turnaround point here in Muel. And as you guys can see, I don't know if you can see it, but you know, it's getting pretty cold outside that the uh, windshield wiper fluid is just, you know, almost freezing to ice, even though it's supposed to manage minus 18, but it is minus nine. So our average consumption now after 97 kilometers and an hour on the road is 31.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers so it's actually dropped a little bit so it's going to be interesting to see if it's going to drop even more because as i said according to the wind map we do have a uh, or we did have you know a uh, a headwind of three to four meters per second on our way from where we started and up until this point so once we get on the motorway again and head south that should be a tailwind giving us a slight push back towards where we're going to stop Okay guys, we are now back where we started and let's stop the timer. Um, yeah, it's getting pretty dark. I just had to mount my light here so you guys could see me. But yeah, it's 3.30 now. Um, you know, we are in the beginning of January, so the sun has turned. Uh, days are getting lighter, but it's not gonna, you know, start getting lighter before maybe a few weeks or a month again. Yeah, this dark period, not the easiest period of the year here in Norway. It helps that, you know, it's a little bit snowy outside because that really does lighten up. It would be worse if it was like uh, not snowy and if it was just like raining, it would be really, really dark. But I was out the other day driving and it was sunny. Today's overcast and yeah, it was really nice because like almost four o'clock before it was dark. 
So we're going to go to the charter here and then we're going to connect and see what charging speed we get after a few hours on the road with only passive heating. Okay, we're now stopped here at the charger and it was very full. I mean, only one vacant or two vacant chargers and actually one of these not working. That is not often. So before we, you know, hop out, I just want to show you guys the average consumption. And that is actually dropped quite a bit to 31.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Okay guys, we have now started the charger and the charge port is here on the right side here at the rear. And yeah, it's, it's snowy. I mean, you can see the car here is covered in, uh, the whole back is covered in snow. I washed the car before doing this range test because you know, when the car's covered with snow, it's gonna have worse aerodynamics. You know, if you go on a plane, they always de-ice the wings because just a little bit amount of ice will actually uh, reduce the lift of the wings. I mean, we're not, it's not the same aerodynamic properties on a car as a, uh, as a plane, but you know, having snow and yeah, just disrupting the, the flow of air is actually gonna increase the, uh, the drag. So that's why, you know, wash the car, but it will accumulate snow. I don't think it's too bad. So that will also, you know, give the car probably a higher consumption than if it was just cold without snow. So let's take a look here, guys. We're now at 27% stated charge and yeah, 73 kilowatts. So that is not fast at all, but to be expected when it's been between minus five or six degrees till minus nine degrees Celsius outside today. Now let's take a look at the results. So if we take the usable battery capacity of this car, which is 107 kilowatt hours, we divide it by the consumption, 31.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, and then we subtract 3% for heat and discharging losses. That gives us a theoretical range under today's conditions of 332 kilometers. And you may be thinking, well, Chris, that consumption is crazy high and 332 kilometers isn't that much for a car with this big of a battery. But you have to consider today's conditions. And this car is a large electric SUV on 22 inch wheels. I mean, the rear tires are 295 millimeters across. And also the conditions today, the coldest we saw was minus nine degrees Celsius. And most of the time it was around minus six to minus seven. And also we had quite a, you know, severe headwind of three to four meters per second on our way northward and also snow on the road. So I mean, less than ideal conditions. And I think that consumption, considering other cars we tested during, you know, similar conditions, that is not too bad. That is to be expected. And also 332 kilometers of real world range at minus seven, minus eight degrees Celsius with headwinds and snow doing 120 kilometers an hour. I think that is actually pretty, pretty decent for this type of vehicle. So I think, you know, the results today, yes, high consumption, you know, the range could possibly be better, but considering the conditions, I think that is actually a very good result. So before we end the video, let's take a look at the noise levels we measured. So at 80 kilometers an hour, we averaged around 61 decibels, which is very, very quiet. At 100 kilometers an hour, we averaged 62 decibels, which is also very quiet. And then at 120 kilometers an hour, I actually did three measurements. Uh, each measurement is done over two or three minutes. And the average uh, noise level was 66 decibels. Again, once you increase speed, the road noise or the tire noise doesn't necessarily increase. It's more of the wind noise. So I think this car is better insulated towards the ground than it is, you know, around the windows. So I measure it here on the passenger side. Um, so you're going to have, you know, more of that wind noise closer to here than if I measured it in the middle. So we really don't know how much quieter or noisier this car is, you know, uh, compared to others, but you know, just from my experience, my subjective experience, this is one of the quietest cars uh, I've ever tested, but we'll see in the future once we get more data for more electric cars. So guys, let me know what you think about the results and I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below and for more car content, as always, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.